Hi there, it's Dr. Dave here again with another Alice tutorial. Now today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different to the previous ones and I'm not actually going to show the development of the code. I'm going to more go through a, a walkthrough of what I've already developed. So here I've got a, a turn-based combat system, or at least the, the skeleton of a turn-based combat system. So the animations at this stage aren't at all exciting and the number of moves and so forth are very limited but should give you the basic idea of, of what we can do or what can be done in Alice. So just quickly give you a, a quick rundown, a quick demonstration of what we've got. I'll just ignore that for the moment. So we've set up two characters. Each character has a number of hit, uh, hit points that are randomly, randomly generated and they've got some basic moves. So the knight and the other character, the crispy knight, both have a kick attack move at the moment. Now you'd imagine in a proper game would have far more moves available. Uh, we've, we're using 3D text to display the number of hit points for each. And the green highlighted one is the one who's, uh, who's got the current attack. So we've got an event here. If I press on the J button, then the knight has an attack. As, as I say, it's just a basic kick attack. And we notice here that the hit points are updated and reduced down to 48. Now Crispy Knight also has a kick attack, and in this case we saw the other knight's hit points reduced to 35. So as I said, the, the animations at this stage are pretty lame, but what we're really interested in is the underlying logic that's going on behind the scenes. So let's take you through that. So what are the, the objects I've created? Well, I've got uh, an object, 3D text object for representing the Crispy Knight's hit points and another one here for representing the knight's hit points. They both have a text. Now initially the text is uh, just hit points with uh, a couple of question marks there and initially we say is showing as false so we don't initially show that until it's actually been initialized. Same goes for the crispy knight and we've got a method here for updating let's show, show that for updating the text that's actually shown. So this one will actually grab the hit points which we take in as a parameter and display that as a string. Now notice here we've used the int as string method or function I should say to make sure that we're displaying it just as an integer. If we didn't have that we'd have a decimal number so we'd have something uh, for example 38.0 being displayed. Okay, so now we'll go to the world and we don't actually use the my, my first method but we do use this initialize method. So when the world first starts we do the world initialize. So what does that do? Well that sets up or initializes, randomly generates the knight's hit points and we do that by rolling or simulating the rolling of a number of, of ten sided dice and we do something similar for the crispy knight and we also set the display of the hit points as well and update the hit points okay so that basic step will run through and give the display of the hit points there we also have a method for toggling turns so if we go to the properties we have a property here representing or that indicates whose turn it is. So in this case we want to tell whether or not it's the, the knight's turn, so the, the character on the right. So initially that's true, so initially the knight will have the first turn, but after each turn we'll toggle that. So let's see how that works. So now we have we go over to our knight, and we've got methods, and let's have a look at the kick attack. So the kick attack Firstly, we'll check to see whether it's the knight's turn. Uh, update the colour. So that's just basically the, the colour of the, of the 3D text. And if it is the knight's turn, we're going to animate the kick. Then, we're going to determine the amount of damage that done, is done. Now, we're using this random probability function here. So it basically says only 60% of the time the knight will actually uh, actually do some damage. If it does, the amount of damage is a random number between 1 and 4, and we add 1 to that, and we call the crispy knight's 
function to decrease the hit points and then update the display of the hit points for the crispy knight. Once all that is done then we toggle the turn. So if we go over back to our world, edit that, that pretty well sets that boolean value. If it was true then it becomes false and vice versa. So back over to here but to our knight, our knight attack. So we toggle the turn and then after a certain delay we change the colour to, to green to indicate it's now the crispy knight's attack. That's the rundown. We have a number of events here so that when if we press the J the the knight's kick attack will be called, that method. If we press A then the crispy knight's kick attack will be called. But again we've got these checks up here to make sure that it's actually the, the knight's turn before we uh, perform an attack. So if it's not the knight's turn I'm pressing on J then nothing will happen. Uh, that's Let's see if there's anything else we need to do. We've got a method here for decreasing the number of uh, hit points. So I should go back over to here, look at the properties of the knight. And notice here we've created a new uh, object variable or property called hit points. It's a number. Initially it's going to be 1. And each time this method is called, then the hit points of the knight is decreased by the amount of damage that's done. Okay, that gives you an overview. I know that uh, there's a lot to take in there, there's probably a lot more details required, but just to give you a flavour of what's going on there, and hopefully in, in future tutorials I'll go through those steps in a lot more detail and actually show the development of the code. But hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what we can do, the underlying logic, and maybe you can take some of this code and, and sort of uh, Im improve it and add some really cool animations and so forth and change or add additional attacks as well. Okay, hope that's been useful. Uh, thanks for listening again and I'll catch you next time.